After installing Unity for the first time, you may have an idea about what some of the panels do inside the program, but you may also be really confused about what exactly you're looking at. So what I'll try and do in this episode is just sort of explain a little bit about what the different panels do and maybe give you some suggestions on some panels that you don't have open right now, but that I highly recommend that you do have open because you will be using it at some point when you're making video games. Now we do actually have a really good first start here because I can show you how to fix this little message that you get at the bottom here because this is something that you might get from time to time. So just to show you how to fix this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick to start with. What you'll have to do is you'll have to go to window, go down to package manager. And once package manager is loaded up, what you do is you go to the bottom where it says visual studio editor. You can open this one up and you can actually see that we do have an update available. So I can click it and I can update to 2011 and just sort of have it do its own thing here. Once that is done, we can close it back down. We can go down to the bottom where we have the console and clear the console to get rid of the error message. The project panel is going to be the place that you import all the different assets and different things that you're using inside your game. And everything that you have to work with is going to be down here so you can drag it into your game into different scenes that you might have. Assets is basically just a fancy word for the things that you're using in your game. So stuff like, you know, audio files, images, uh, sprites, different things that you might be using inside your game is going to go down and be organized inside your assets folder. And it is just sort of a general rule of thumb that you want to have this organized. So when you have anything new, like for example, if I were to insert sprites into my project, which is basically just a 2D graphics image that you can use in order to create 2D games, I can create a new folder by right clicking, create folder, and then call this one sprites. And then you would then insert your sprites in there. The same thing if you have a C sharp script, then you wouldn't just place it out here in the main directory, you would actually create a folder, create folder, say scripts, and then you would have a separate folder for scripts, just so you have some sort of organization going. Now, since we're already down here at the bottom, the next one we can talk about is going to be the console. As you saw before, the console is basically the place where we're going to receive errors or notifications about whatever game you might be building. So if you made some sort of error in your code, or if there's something inside the UI here that isn't really working out, then it's going to tell you that inside the console. So the console is basically your best friend, but also your worst enemy, because it's going to be the place where you don't want to receive any sort of messages unless you're actively telling it to give you a message. You're going to be very familiar with the console because the console is the place where we do debugging. So if there's something we want to test out in our game to make sure that things are working properly, the console is where we're going to be outputting data so we can actually see that everything is working correctly. The hierarchy is going to be where we have all the different game objects that goes into the scene that we're currently working with. So a scene is basically like a level inside the game, or it could also just be the main menu that has been loaded up inside your game. The hierarchy is going to be the place where all the game objects that makes up that scene is going to be plugged into so you can see all the different objects inside your game. So right now you can see that I have a main camera. This is basically because you have a main camera as a default every time you open up a new Unity project. So right now, this is all we have inside our um, scene that we have in front of us here. On the right side of the hierarchy, we have the scene and the game view. This is the place where we can actually see what we're developing. So inside the scene view is what we as developers can see that we're building inside our game. And you can actually see a small preview down here in the corner because I do have the main camera selected. So it is showing me what I can actually see inside the game. So if I unselect it, you can see it disappears. But the scene view is basically where we work. And this is where we built our game. Whereas if you were to go to the game view, you can actually see what the actual camera is seeing once we actually get into the video game. So right now it doesn't look very interesting. So what I could do is I go to the main camera and just sort of change the skybox background if I wanted to do that. So I can make this into a white or a dark background if I wanted to do that. Um, so as you can see, this is basically what we have inside our game right now, which is nothing really. Now, whenever you have anything selected inside Unity, whether it being something inside your scene or it being a asset down here at the bottom, it's going to give you any sort of information about that asset or game object inside the inspector. So right now you can see that I do have my camera selected. If I go back to the scene view, you can see this is my camera and the boundaries that we can actually see things inside the game. So if I were to go over here, you can see that, well, the camera does have some different components inside uh, the camera and we can also mess with the properties of these different components. If I want to mess with the position of the camera, I can go to the transform component up here and I can, you know, move it up or down. If I wanted to do that, I can also 
uh, scale it if I want it to be bigger. I can also go and change the skybox into something else. You know, whatever the camera might be seeing inside the scene. So there's a lot of different settings here for the camera. If I were to actually have a game object inside my hierarchy and I can actually go ahead and just sort of create a, uh, just a placeholder sprite. For example, I can make a square. So now I can see we do actually have something inside my game. If I were to go to game view, you can see the square in here. If I were to click the camera, you can also go ahead and see that we do have the square down here in the preview window. If I were to go ahead and select that game object, you can see, oh, we suddenly get some new settings inside the inspector. So we have a transform component and we also have a sprite renderer component, which is basically what allow for us to actually see the sprite. If we were to uncheck the sprite render, you can see, oh, now it suddenly disappears because it's not actually rendering inside our scene. So, you know, all the different components and properties that we have inside our current game at the moment with the main camera and the square is something we can see inside the inspector and mess with. I should also mention, this is also the place where I got my first epiphany. Whenever you need to go inside your code, when you have to code something for Unity and let's say you want to, for example, let's say I want to take this square, which might be the player in this case here, and I want to move him around. So I want him to go left or right. Then we do actually through our code reference to these components up here and then afterwards reference to what is inside the component. So we sort of dig in, we say we want to grab this game object in the code, then after we grab the game object, we grab the component, and then after we grab the component, we grab the property. And then we can just simply go in and change the X or Y or C, you know, to make the player move around. Now there is, of course, a couple of windows that I do recommend that you have open to start with, since these are windows that, in my experience, you will be using at some point. If you go up to the top to where it says Edit in the corner, go down to where it says Project Settings, you can see it now opens up a separate window called Project Settings. This is a place that you're going to be visiting quite a lot as you're making your game, so what I would do is I would just sort of take it and drag it up next to the inspector up here. So you can go back and forth between your inspector and your project settings. There is also another window I recommend that you have open, which is the animator and the animation window. So there's actually technically, we have two windows that needs to be open. If you go to window, go down to where it says animation and click on animation. You can see we get this little animation window. What I wanna do is I wanna drag it down next to where we have the console because that is typically something that we want to have really long. So having at the bottom there next to the console just sort of makes sense. I also want to go to window, go down to animation and open up the animator, which is going to be something that goes together with this little animation panel we have down there. So I'm just gonna drag it down to the same place. And basically, whenever you have any sort of sprite, like let's say the player character or something, and you want to animate him and make him run or jump or something, you're going to be animating him. And that is what you're going to be using the animation panel to do because you're going to have different images where he's moving, you know, step by step. And you're going to be controlling that inside the animation tab down here. And then inside the animator tab, you're going to be controlling whenever he is going to, you know, jump from one animation to another animation. That is what you're going to be doing down here. I think the last thing I want to show you before we end off the video is just if you were to go up to the game tab, if you want to see the performance of whatever game you're running to see how it is performing on your system, you can click the stats tab that we have up here click it and then you can actually see how it's performing on your computer. So this is something that I also highly recommend when you're running the game to test it out inside Unity that you have open so you can see what is going on. Again, maybe not at the beginning here since you know the performance is not really probably what you have to worry about when you're learning to make games. But at a later point, this is something that you want to be aware of is up here so you can actually see it. And that is really all I wanted to talk about in this video here. I know that people can sort of, you know, when they just start out learning something, be a little bit confused when they look at a program like this. So hopefully this little short explanation of the different windows might give an idea about what exactly you're looking at. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one.